In this video, we're going to take a look at the first lab on API testing on Port Sugar's Web Security Academy. The lab is called Exploiting an API Endpoint Using Documentation. As usual, we'll start by going through the background information that's relevant to the lab. If you've already been through this in your own time, or you already know all the theory behind it, feel free to jump to the chapter where we go to the lab. Application Programming Interfaces, aka APIs, enable software systems and applications to communicate and share data. API testing is important as vulnerabilities in APIs may undermine core aspects of websites' confidentiality, integrity, and availability. All dynamic websites are composed of APIs, so classic web vulnerabilities like SQL injection could be classed as API testing. In this topic, we'll learn how to test APIs that aren't fully used by the website front end with a focus on RESTful and JSON APIs. We'll also learn how to test for server-side parameter pollution vulnerabilities that may impact internal APIs. To illustrate the overlap between API testing and general web testing, Portswigger created a mapping between their existing topics and the OWASP API Top 10 2023. And you can view that map in here, which shows the OWASP Top 10 and then the relevant modules on the Security Academy. To start API testing, you first need to find out as much information about the API as possible to discover its attack surface. To begin, you should identify the API endpoints. These are locations where the API receives requests about a specific resource on its server. Consider the following GET request, which makes a request to API slash books on example.com. This results in an interaction with the API to retrieve a list of books from the library. Another API endpoint might be, for example, API slash books slash mystery, which would retrieve a list of all the mystery books. Once you've identified the endpoints, you can determine how to interact with them. This enables you to construct valid HTTP requests to test the API. For example, you should find out the information about the following. The input data the API processes, including both compulsory and optional parameters. The types of requests the API accepts, including HTTP methods and media formats. And rate limits and authentication mechanisms. APIs are usually documented so that developers know how to use and integrate with them. Documentation can be both human-readable and machine-readable forms. Human-readable documentation is designed for developers to understand how to use the API. It may include detailed explanations, examples, and usage scenarios. Machine-readable documentation is designed to be processed by software for automating tasks like API integration and validation. It's written in structured formats like JSON or XML. API documentation is often publicly available, particularly if the API is intended for use by external developers. In this case, always start your recon by reviewing the documentation. Even if API documentation isn't openly available, you may still be able to access it by browsing applications that use the API. To do this, you can use the burp scanner to crawl the API. You can also browse applications manually, and you want to look for endpoints that may refer to API documentation. So look for slash API, slash swagger slash index.html, and slash openapi.json. If you identify an endpoint for a resource, make sure to investigate the base path. For example, if you find the resource slash API slash swagger v1 users123, then you should investigate the following paths. So we want to investigate this path. We also want to investigate this path, and we want to investigate this path. You could also use a list of common paths to directly fuzz for documentation. You can use a range of automated tools to analyze any machine-readable API documentation that you find. You can also use Burp Scanner to crawl and audit open API documentation or any other documentation in JSON or YAML format. And you can parse open API documentation using the open API parser Burp app. You may also be able to use a specialized tool to test for documented endpoints such as Postman or SOAP UI. So with the background stuff out of the way, let's take a look at the lab. The description says, to solve the lab, find the exposed API documentation and delete Carlos. And we've been given some credentials to log in with. We're told what we need to know in order to solve the lab. Let's go ahead and open it up. OK, it told us to check out the API documentation. That's the object of the lab. But I always like to just have a look at the site functionality as the first thing we do when we have a look at challenge. And I'm going to have a look here at one of the products. There's no option to add it to the cart or anything. And if we just go to our burp suite and then have a look in the HTTP history, I just want to see is there anything here about an API, but there isn't. So maybe we'll explore a little bit more. Let's go ahead and log in. And we log in. Let's check the 
history again, we can see that we've actually got a JS file called change email, which is in slash JS slash API. So that's interesting. Let's also try and update the email. We do that. And this time we actually have one that's going directly to slash API slash user slash Wiener. So we probably want to send this to the repeater and then we'll have a play around with it. But let's just actually go and do what we were supposed to do at the beginning, which was go and check out those potential locations of slash API. And we can also check like slash swagger, things like that. But slash API works for us straight away. And what that does is it brings back this rest API and it has a list of potential HTTP requests we can make. So we can do a get, we can do a delete and we can do a patch. And if you click on the thing at the end, it will show you what the response will be. So there we get a status back from delete. We get back the username and the email if we do a get or a patch. And if you just click somewhere else on this, you can actually type in the user here. So we could actually put in Wiener and then we can just send a request directly in this toolkit or we can take a copy of this and then just make the curl request. But we don't need to do that. We can just do that manually. Um, let me just also check the patch one. So yeah, we could put in here Carlos and then put in the email. Well, I'm going to do this through the burp repeater. So let's go back to the repeater. Here's our patch. And yeah, we could try and actually update the user for this, right? Because it takes in a username and an email. So we could put in here Carlos, but we actually want to delete Carlos. So here was the other option here, delete. And if we weren't able to access this documentation, another thing we could have done here was to just try and do options and then click send. And it doesn't, it comes back saying method not allowed. So Options would typically come back and tell you what options are allowed here. We do have up here allow, and then it says delete, patch, and get. So these are the three we're allowed to do. So we didn't actually need this documentation. So I'm going to change that to delete. And then I'm obviously going to also change the username to Carlos. And does it take in, it doesn't take an email. Let's click send, user deleted. Okay, let's go back to the lab home. And there we go, we solved the lab. So we've just learned how to exploit an API endpoint to delete a user without authorization. We were supposed to do that with the documentation, but we showed two different ways we could do it. And in the next video, we'll be looking at how to find unused API points. As usual, let me just recommend that you sign up to the Integrity platform if you want to find some API vulnerabilities and get paid for it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.